You're watching WXYZ 7. Now, Action News at 11. What really happened inside these walls of Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq? A man who's in the Detroit area tonight says he knows firsthand. Good evening, I'm Glenda Lewis. Thank you for joining us. And I'm Dave Llewellyn. That man has relatives in Dearborn and a lawyer in Royal Oak. And now he's looking for justice. Action News reporter Glenn Zimmerman is live in Royal Oak with the story tonight. Glenn? Good evening, Dave. That man talked to us for quite some time about nearly the two months that he spent inside that prison. He also told us that he was released because apparently he didn't do anything wrong. Now, you must know these things, first of all. You will not see the man's face at all in this story because he's asked us to protect his identity. Second of all, he does not speak English. You'll hear his voice and the voice of a translator. Punishment and torture happening, um, which I can't even talk about. With only a bracelet to show he was there, this man, who we will only call Mr. Saleh, could add fuel to the ever-growing scandal of Iraqi prisoner abuse. The sounds and the voices of people crying, women wailing, yelling, is very effective, very emotional. Mr. Saleh was a prisoner at Abu Ghraib prison under Saddam Hussein's regime because he says he was an outspoken enemy of the government. For years, he was living as a political refugee in Sweden. But last year, with Saddam out of power, he decided to return to his native Iraq with his life savings of $79,000 and his car. He wanted to rebuild his life. While driving in Iraq, he claims an American soldier pointed a gun at his head and didn't believe he was a Swedish national. That's when he says he once again ended up in Abu Ghraib prison, the same prison there's already documentation of abuse. Yes, I was tortured, but never asked the question. I was always referred to as a liar. He cannot speak of the torture, but in this claim filed with the U.S. government, the nudity, humiliation, and often sexually oriented torture is clearly explained. I would say these people do not represent America. Because I've been to America and I've seen what America is all about. The people of America are wonderful people. Now I must point this out. This complaint is dated May 12th. That is well after the national story broke. So we had to talk to the attorney. Why wait so long to file the documentation? He said, first of all, he needed to verify all the claims. And then when the national report came out, so many things that Mr. Saleh had said before the national report came out jived with the national report. That was one thing that pushed him forward. Another thing was that there was emotional and psychological abuse that seemed to jive as well with this sort of torture. What is the next thing he's going to do? Well, he wants his $79,000. He also wants some sort of compensation for his car, as well as compensation for the emotional abuse. We're going to have to wait 30 to 60 days for the government to make its choice. We are live here in Royal Oak. Glenn Zimmerman, Channel 7 Action News. Thank you, Glenn. Secretary of State Colin Powell apologized today for the abuse of Iraqi prisoners and now says the U.S. deserves an apology for the murder of an American hostage. Powell met with Arab leaders in Jordan over the weekend. He says he was surprised and disappointed that there was not widespread outrage over the videotape beheading of Nicholas Berg. There ought to be outrage. There is anger in the Arab world about some of our actions, but that is no excuse for any silence on the part of any Arab leader for this kind of murder. Powell's apology isn't likely going to make the abuse scandal disappear. An article published in the New Yorker says Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld authorized the abuse of prisoners as part of interrogations. The Pentagon denies the report. Detroit police are searching for a gunman who shot one person tonight. That victim is in critical condition. Action News reporter Mike Bowersock is live on Detroit's west side with the latest. Mike? Dave, homicide detectives and evidence technicians have arrived here in the 18,000 block of Stout to try to figure out what happened. Here's what we know so far. Two men were arguing here in the 18,000 block. What they were arguing over, we don't know, but one of the men pulled out a gun, a handgun, and shoots the other one in the side. We are told he was shot twice. That young man that was shot was on a, a bicycle. That bicycle still laying here on the ground. He is in critical condition. We are told extremely critical condition at Sinai Grace Hospital. Police don't have his name. They are treating this as a John Doe at this time. They do have a name for the suspected shooter. He is 19 years old, and they are looking for him right now. That is the situation here on Detroit's west side. Reporting live, I'm Mike Bowersock, Channel 7 Action News. Thank you, Mike. The man accused of gunning down his longtime friend in Royal Oak faced a judge today. Jim Galloway was charged with murdering William Corbin 
inside Corbin's home, where police found his body Thursday. Galloway and his wife stayed with Corbin on and off over the last 20 years. Police say Galloway admitted to killing Corbin and may have used Corbin's own gun to do it. Defendant loaded the weapon beforehand um, uh, and then went downstairs. I think this was uh, some, an argument over some disparaging comments said to the uh, defendant's wife by the victim. Galloway's wife has not been charged in the murder, and it's unclear whether she played a role in the crime. However, she is being held on an unrelated outstanding warrant. Detroit police are trying to figure out if their officers could be responsible for a violent crash this morning. A squad car slammed into a Jeep on the west side, rolling the SUV over. Neither of the officers was seriously hurt, but one person in the Jeep was hospitalized. And two teenagers remain in critical condition after a car accident on Detroit's east side last night. Rescue crews had to cut the passengers out of the wreckage after the car ran into a utility pole. One adult and four teenagers were in the car at the time of the accident. Members of the Black Panthers took to the streets today, hoping to close what they say is a drug house. About two dozen Panthers worked to harass anyone and everyone inside the home. They say someone there firebombed one of their members who planned to go to police. The protest sparked some confrontations, but that's nothing new for Panthers. We've been shot at. We've had Rottweilers, pit bulls, whatever sick on us. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says, resist the devil and he will flee. And we're shutting down crack houses in the name of Jesus Christ, and we're going to keep doing it. City Councilwoman Joanne Watson was on hand and says she has talked to the police chief about bringing more officers to the street. Pistons beat the Nets in New Jersey tonight, 81 to 75, and the two teams will now play a do-or-die game seven. And Action News wants you to be there. We'll hook you up with the toughest ticket in town, game seven of the Pistons and Nets, Thursday night at the Palace. Just watch Action News this morning, starting tomorrow at 5 a.m. for your chance to win. Coming up on Action News at 11, they were supposed to be on a fishing trip in paradise. Tonight, Chief Investigator Steve Wilson uncovers what some of these Michigan boys were really fishing for. Plus, a race against time for dozens of people on a sinking boat. Coming up, the frantic rescue caught on tape. More sunshine and warmer temperatures are ahead, but they'll come at a price, a chance for storms. We'll have all the details ahead in the Doppler 7 forecast. After a nice little break here for the weekend, it's back to the storms next week. I'll tell you what days will be worse. All the breaking news, join us Monday morning at 5 a.m. Looking for the right mix of on-road handling and off-road capability? Look no further than versatile Jeep Liberty. With air, power windows and locks, remote keyless entry, and one extra comfort. A great deal. Because now for just $189 a month, you can lease a 2004 Liberty Sport if you're a qualified returning Daimler Chrysler employee lessee. Plus, you'll also get great protection in our 770 Powertrain Limited Warranty. So see your Chrysler and Jeep Superstores today. It's another sold-out palace tonight. If you didn't get tickets, boy, are you missing out. Toilet paper roll to Art Project. Art Project to toilet paper roll. Rejected by Wallace, who loves it down court to Chauncey, who lays it in for two. Oh, <laughs> Kids, look! Hooper! Who wants a shirt? <laughs> Peanuts. It's just like being at the Pistons game, huh, guys? If you don't get tickets now, you have options. But do you really want them? <laughs> Ticket plans for next year are going fast. Reserve yours by putting $250 down now. Join the crew with a full half or ten game plan. Call 248 Three seven seven zero one hundred, or order tickets online at pistons.com. That's two four eight three seven seven zero one hundred, or pistons.com. Pistons basketball presented by Rock Financial. <laughs> what I need now is for you to tell me how many minutes you're going to use this ball every month for the next two years. If you guess too few and go over, there's an overage charge, and if you guess too many, well, that's just a waste, isn't it? Um. Introducing an entirely new way to buy wireless. The Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible Plan adjusts every month so you don't waste a lot of money or minutes. If you don't have to guess, it's good. Sprint PCS. Now that's better.
it will let out the seat for you. Take in the size. Even adjust for the proper length. The Lexus ES with an advanced memory system. For those who appreciate a custom fit. And need Lexus of Southfield and Lakeside and Lexus of Ann Arbor. Tonight in Massachusetts, same-sex couples are lined up outside at least one city hall for the chance to be part of history. At midnight, the city clerk in Cambridge is scheduled to hand out the country's first state-sanctioned gay marriage applications. Hundreds and perhaps thousands of gay couples are expected to marry in Massachusetts in the coming days. A dramatic rescue off the coast of San Francisco this weekend was caught on tape. Here you see a charter fishing boat starting to sink. Three nearby fishing boats rushed into its aid. 28 passengers and crew members were transferred to other vessels. One man died, possibly from a heart attack. Another was treated for hypothermia. They are some of Detroit's leading citizens, and they call themselves the Michigan Boys. But tonight, our chief investigative reporter, Steve Wilson, joins us with a disturbing view of these boys that they never wanted you to see. These boys are quite a bunch. Leaders of local business and industry, men who labor at blue-collar jobs, even a well-known sports hero. And frankly, if the group did not include some public officials who themselves acknowledge they should be held to a higher standard of conduct and character, this is a story we might never have aired. Is it just a tale of boys will be boys? Many gathered before dawn at the Macomb County restaurant where bartender Angelo Nucci has served up this annual junket for nine years now. Our Chopper 7 had the best view of all the limos to Metro Airport where a plane load of gregarious gringos, 167 of them, couldn't wait to be headed south to beautiful Costa Rica in a chartered jetliner. Most, no doubt, told their friends and families, their wives and their girlfriends, it's just a fishing trip. But about six hours later, when they arrived at a small Costa Rican airfield, they stepped down into a faraway land where they suspected no one would be watching or care how they were greeted by natives who couldn't have been friendlier if they'd been paid. So what could be wrong with this picture? The Michigan boys, it's, it's sort of like a myth here. They know, we know what's going on. He knows as a result of his work as director of Casa Alianza, as an affiliate of Detroit's Covenant House, his organization works to improve the condition of families and children in Latin America. They've been here year after year, and it's one of the sad situations for Costa Rica. Supposedly, they come on fishing trips, but when you start to hear some of the stories, it's a lot more than fishing that they're hooking into. Well, apparently, many of the beautiful Costa Rican women were paid, and for much more than that friendly welcome at the airport. When the boys' buses arrived at their luxury seaside hotel, and for the duration of their five-day stay, dozens of prostitutes were waiting to party. One madam, who brought at least two of her girls to work the Michigan men, confided to me that each of the more than 70 prostitutes on hand paid up to $300 for the privilege of marketing themselves. The madam told me the money went to the boys' local organizer, boat captain Sonny Cosas, there in the yellow t-shirt. He's an American expatriate with roots in Tampa and hooked up with the Michigan boys for years now. The fee he reportedly collected essentially licensed the working girls to enter the hotel to mingle among the Michigan men and offer themselves for sex. While prostitution is legal in Costa Rica, it is not when such arrangements or any kind of pimping is involved. A Costa Rican local working for us also confirmed those arrangements in conversations with many of the girls and hotel workers he surreptitiously recorded with our equipment. The hookers who didn't hand over top dollar were simply not provided with wristband passes that allowed them onto the hotel property. I've now spoken to many of the Michigan boys, and according to virtually every one of them, this could have been a church retreat. Nothing more than some innocent fishing, a bite to eat, and off to bed early. And alone, they say. Not the story we heard from the working girls down there and other Costa Ricans in a position to know. <laughs> Our team, which included journalists from Costa Rica's largest daily newspaper, witnessed several Michigan men heading off to their rooms with prostitutes. And the final night, in the darkness next to the pool. No cameras. Anybody gets a camera, they get their ass smashed. Okay. 
We couldn't show it to you anyway. Teams of naked men and women in competition to see who could outgross the other. And with all this going on, what worries Michigan boys organizer Angelo Nucci the most? Somebody finding out who's here and what really goes on with some of the boys when the fishing day is done. You know, the problem with what I trip is some of the guys go there on Friday and they talk too much and then you know, somebody hears in the bar about and some of the wife or something out here. And it's sad because not everybody goes there does it. And public officials we spotted on the trip, people like City of Warren Police Chief Danny Clark right there, they all deny any wrongdoing. Clark, who avoided us for two days, even tried to claim... I did not know that they were hookers. The veteran cop insisted at first he couldn't tell what was going on around him. Yes, there were women at the bar. And in your professional opinion, in your opinion as just an observer, would you say those women were prostitutes? Did that thought ever cross your mind? Yes, it did. But he was there for the fishing, not to reel in an hourly girlfriend. He claims he merely chatted with the girls, but never touched a one. Is to my you? knowledge, no. Well, to your knowledge, I would think if she had her hands on you or you had yours on That's her, correct. you would know, right? So the chief, who, like the others, points out he went on his own dime and his own time. He's entirely innocent here? But you're telling me categorically... I'm not saying categorically. Okay, well, I'm asking for a categorical answer because you know the truth. And I'm asking yes, you, to, sir, and I'm asking you to tell it. I was there in Costa Rica for a fishing trip. I did not solicit any prostitutes. I did not use the services of any prostitutes, did not leave with any prostitutes, dance with any prostitutes. Would it concern you that one of your imp in, in, appointees, the leader of your police department in this community, would be cavorting with prostitutes far away? Uh, well, yeah, that would concern me. So what concerns the mayor and the city's police commissioner? It's more than just the hypocrisy of a cop fighting prostitution at home and then rubbing elbows with hookers far away where he thinks nobody will see. For him, he's... Uh... Uh, as chief, he's a semi-public official. Um, semi-public? Or a public official. Well, he's in, a, he's in a limelight. He's not elected. He's not... Do you expect uh, higher standards of your police chief than to be doing that? If that's what he's doing, yes, I would. we got a higher standard that we have to live up to, whether we're here or someplace else, um, you know, that, that we have to have to show. If it was proven that he was doing that kind of thing, I think it would be wrong. Why? I say, on a moral basis, it would be wrong. And that's the point for the Michigan boys who are public officials subject to higher standards and constant public scrutiny. Our judges, for instance, are required to restrict their own conduct, to avoid even the appearance of impropriety because situations just like this can erode public confidence. And speaking of judges, when we continue tomorrow night right here at 6 o'clock, we'll name and hear from the local judge who was on the same trip and another Warren cop, and even a Michigan school board president. Are they violating the standards you expect? That's tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, right here on Channel 7. All right. Thank you, Steve. All right, let's turn to the weather now. Shay Ryan is in, and mm -hmm. it's a glorious day today, Shay. Beautiful absolutely a glorious day and uh, a lot of folks outside enjoying it to the fullest temperatures were pretty decent today making it to the low to middle 60s in most cases and i say out my back door it was 69 degrees so pretty comfortable all around take a look though out at the eastern market today beautiful flowers to be picked and purchased but uh, take a look here, people enjoying all the beautiful weather and taking advantage of the opportunity to start planting some own things, uh, plants in their own front yards or backyards for that matter. As far as our weather goes right now, it is 54 degrees outside, so still pretty comfortable for this time of night, this time of year. Our winds are coming now from the southeast. This is going to push in some warmth into tomorrow. In fact, we do have a warm front that's going to head across our area. And you can see right now very clear skies, some clouds trying to build their way in. But so far, just fair weather clouds. We do have a very large storm system that's building out to our north and west. It's going to hold off, though, and we won't begin seeing its effects in our area until tomorrow night. But this is how we'll start the day. Southeasterly winds bringing in plenty of warmth to start the day with sunshine and fair weather clouds. This warm front is going to move across the area during the day, and the winds are going to shift to the south. That's going to pump in more heat and a little more moisture into the air, making it slightly muggy tomorrow afternoon. With that southerly flow and the heat building in and this frontal system off to our north and west, there will be a chance for hit or miss thunderstorms in the afternoon, but the real soaking rains won't build in until overnight tomorrow night, and that will continue into, th into Wednesday, Tuesday. Figure out my days of the week here. For tonight, though, mostly clear skies. 47 degrees as the morning low. Tomorrow, we'll see sunshine, fair weather clouds, and a high of 77. 
Then we'll have that slight chance of hit or miss showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Overnight, more consistent rain will build in. It'll continue on and off throughout the day on Tuesday with a chance for some thunderstorms. We'll also have a chance for some severe storms that day. So we'll continue to keep an eye on it and keep you posted. But overall, over the next five days, it's going to be some decent weather with temperatures in the 70s and sunshine mixed in with the rain. Sounds great, Shane. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A much-needed win for the Pistons tonight to keep their season alive. Highlights from the crucial game six when Jay steps in next with sports. We'll be right back. In Michigan, weather is news. So what's it take to be the leader, to be the station everyone turns to? You have to know Michigan. You have to invest in the best technology. And above all, be accurate when you're needed most. Jerry Hodak and the Doppler 7 weather team. Every day on Action News. Where can a Mercury Mountaineer take you? The sky's the limit. Announcing the Lincoln Mercury SUV drive away. Featuring Mercury Mountaineer with an available power moonroof, seating for up to seven, and a chance for you to win a 2004 Mercury Mountaineer for two years, and meet coach Steve Mariucci. Only at the SUV drive away. See your Metro Detroit Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Log on to the 7 on Your Side Health Team website. It's your connection to information that will improve your life. Reports from our health team and recipes from health experts. Go to WXYZ.com. Follow the links. Brought to you by Subway. Eat fresh. Give Kids the World is a special place that brings children with life-threatening illnesses to Central Florida for a magical week-long vacation. Our whole purpose is to take the entire family out of that world of doctors and hospital visits and through the wonderful compassion of Walmart and their associates, we're able to help thousands of children. So for one week, they can just be a kid again. And before you know it, they're just having the time of their lives. They're forgetting that they're sick. With Walmart support, we've imagined a child's world and then given it all to them. Driven by a dream, William Durant was in a rush to the future. Of course, there were naysayers, but his citizen's banker wasn't one of them. He got straight answers fast and a loan that would change history. Today, you might know Billy's dream by only two letters. What's your dream? Let's make it happen! Citizens Bank. Let's make it happen. Win one, they call you a champion. Win four, they call you a dynasty. What do they call you when you win 13 years in a row? A BMW. The 3 Series was named one of car and driver's 10 best for 2004, an unprecedented 13th consecutive year. Lease a BMW 325i for only $2.99 a month until June 30th. The Pistons championship chase continues. Game 7, Thursday night at the Palace, thanks to that 81-75 win in New Jersey tonight. Here's the biggie, and fittingly, it belongs to Rip Hamilton, 24 in the game, but none bigger than that hoop. 77-73 Pistons again, 81-75 the final. Game 7, Thursday at the Palace. This is what the playoffs is about. You know, getting an opportunity to play Game 7 on your home court, and I think it's a fun opportunity for everybody. Big win, Dave. Much more coming up on Sports Update when Don Shane will join us from East Rutherford. Back to you. All right, we'll tune in for that. And a reminder, Action News could be your ticket to Game 7 of the Pistons Nets series. Just watch Action News this morning starting at 5 a.m. tomorrow to find out how you can get your hands on the hottest ticket in town. That's tomorrow on Action News this morning. And we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> when we say breaking news, it's important. Live, on-the-scene coverage that connects you to what's going on right now. And nobody covers breaking news like 7 Action News. On your side. When we came up with Kia Fest, we knew people would get excited about these deals. But not like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New cars now! Touch a new cars now! Oh, Jackie? She couldn't handle all the cash back. This is a rental! This is insane. Right now, during Kia Fest Memorial Day, everyone's getting crazy deals and ridiculous amounts of cash back. It's Kia Fest Detroit. Just a few days of peace, love, and savings. One month. Seven years. Ten years. Twelve years. Fifteen years. Twenty-three years. Thirty years. 
Our customers have been with us an average of 15 years, nearly half for more than 20. They stay because we give them great service, free checking, free web bill pay, and hundreds of convenient branch and ATM locations. Most branches open Saturday. 40 years, going on 41. Comerica, we listen, we understand, we make it work. Oh, look. <laughs> Let's try it on. Bob, what are you doing here? Waiting for the egg salad sandwiches. You guys always serve them with these things, right? Now you can enjoy the great taste of egg salad anytime. <laughs> Introducing Tim Horton's egg salad sandwich with a medium coffee and donut, just $3.99. That's a great party. Oh, you bet. And remember, our drive through is open 24 hours. No one likes to play on an uneven playing field. But Michigan's current electric laws have all of us playing on an uneven field. And who's the big loser? You are. Because new, out-of-state suppliers take advantage of the law to serve only the biggest customers, leaving everybody else out, like you. And that's not fair. Michigan needs an electric law that's fair to everyone. So support electric choice reform and make electric laws fair for everyone. To learn more, contact CLEAR at clearmichigan.com. Here's a look at the headlines in tomorrow's Detroit Free Press, an exclusive look at how donated real estate is netting big bucks for a few. Automakers will save billions from the new Medicare drug bill, and Mitch Album on the Pistons-Nets matchup. That's all in tomorrow's Detroit Free Press. And that's the latest from Action News at 11. We thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned. Jay's got sports update next. Don Shane live from the Meadowlands after the Pistons' big win. Have a great night. Good night. Jumpstart your...